this time on Project 49. I was hoping like just because they're original I could save them. So I just got my stuff from World War II VW. Yeah, let's let's do it properly. Absolute nightmare. And that is tight as f <clears throat> No way. Beam the vent on this. Uh, here we have the beam. So uh, if you notice that the shock towers are at the bottom of the beam, that's actually the way it sits. I noticed a few people saying that we had the beam upside down, but it's uh, it's actually from a Kuba wagon. Um, and this style changed actually the, I think it was the month after this car was made. So um, it would have been July 49 when they went to an upright shock tower. Hold up. How do we just get to a nice beam? This is what we actually started with. Old bodges, old repairs, plenty of old rot, old bolts, everything needed replacing, plates were rotted through, but nothing a Saturday morning that drummers couldn't sort. That's Matt. Drummer's our welder mate. And uh, a drummer. Shock towers needed the most work. We replaced the end plates, chopped out all the rot, replaced the shock mounts, the bolt that goes in there, replaced all the end plates, welded it all up, and compared it to a later beam. A quick media blast and a prime later, and brings us right back to now. Beam on. So the beam weighs pretty much nothing. It's, a, it's the lightest beam I've ever come across. Uh, shock towers, which you've rebuilt, go at the bottom. Again, probably weird, but um, I just keep the original locking tabs. Um, like I said, I have got some coming from World War II VW, but at the moment, uh, these will do just fine. I tapped all this beforehand. I covered these in copper slip just to give it a fine chance back through. So yeah, this is the this is actually the original frame head, so it is sort of 74 years old. Let's get this one seems a little tight. The last thing you want to do is cross cross thread these. So Titan Titan's actually pretty nerve wracking. Um, the, the, yeah, the, the, once they get deep in there, the feeling that you might cross thread them is just bloody awful. A bit like putting a gearbox in. Not as tight as I want to do them. I did uh, knock, knock them down and they were just a bit, they're just, they're just a bit old and f So, I was hoping, like, just because they're original, I could save them, but save then the I think about yeah. it and think, who gives a shit when you've got original locking tabs? <laughs> yeah. It's taking a bit of Yes, yeah, original's, a bit original's far, nice. Yeah. Original's nice, but if it's... Yeah, so... Broken original's not. So I just got my stuff from World War II VW. Parcel through. They still do all that sort of thing, and they sent me a tab set for the whole for the whole car. So I'll just, just swap them over, just because... There's not a lot holding that beam on. So I reckon, yeah, let's let's do it properly. Okay, and then also we've got, uh, I've tested all these bushes. They're all the original Bakelite bushes in there. Uh, they fit lovely, uh, on, but uh, just on that side. I'm not sure why just on that side, because this side would toast. But, you know, that's got a nice sort of, there's zero play. Yeah, stuck a vernier in there, it's all the same. Uh, but both, both of these are, yeah, you know, they have that sort of. Yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy with that. I, I'd, I'd run any car like that. There's, there's nothing, which is excellent. Um, I have brought replacements, but I don't think I'm gonna fit them in that side, just because I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, <clears throat> We'll maybe 
Um, well, we're definitely going to do the other side anyway. Uh, the inner seam pretty good, but I think what we'll do is we'll fit, well, we'll have a look. <coughs> so they also came from World War II VW today. They're, they're made, I mean, they're originally Bakelite. They, they smell like Bakelite and they're solid. They're, they're, they're quite a cool material, but I don't know if they actually are. They look almost fibrous, but they're quite, quite an interesting thing rather than a polyurethane bush. Um, let's have to be driven in, I think a little bit. So should we test that on the arm? Let's see if we need to ream it before we get it. Uh, well, they've got to go in anyway. True. So if they have to be reamed, they've got to be in there. So I guess a slight lick of grease around there. That's what I'm um, saying, it's, if we grease it and then have to ream it, is it just going to spit? Well, it says that that's just what it says in the Bentley manual. Like, yeah. like the manual just says to, to lick a little bit of grease around the side, knock them straight through and then ream them once they're in. Oh, okay. But well, let's, let's just see how they go. Yeah. Um, just just using a socket or whatever. And so there you go. That's, that's not that's not a lot. Um, I did have a socket. There you go. Let's get a hammer. So yeah, and I guess it's just driving. There's not actually a tool to do this. Uh, it just showed it just showed driving it in like that. It's not very straight, is it? And that's going in quite nicely. Say, it's nice and even. There's no, um, I was expecting to see a bit of sort of swarf coming off it or whatever. Yeah. You reckon that's about flush? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, that's one in. All right. I was quite happy with that. So what we can do is if we ream this, we can then, if we ream that out, if it needs it, we can drive it through. We can check for play on that second bush. Yeah. If that second bush is worn, then we'll drive this all the way through, knock in that bush, we'll measure it, drive that in, and then replace that bush. Yeah. And the old bush will be stuck in it obsolete. That's what I've done before with like split bus yeah. beams and things like that, and like um, anything that doesn't use a needle bearing. We just sort of oh, like roll a bearing. We just we just done that. Yeah, so. exactly. It's still going to be seated. It's not going to be like rattling around loose in there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so should we try an arm? Yeah, let's do it. Now, what's the top arm? Which um, is on the bench. Yeah. Okay. Also, we replaced those rubbers, haven't you? There we have, and that is tight as. F <coughs> no way. So we definitely need a reamer. Yeah. Okay. So where do you get a ream of that size? Um, and that, ladies and gents, is our new problem. Hey, Smith. Should we go sell one? Sell everything else. Because that is a bit of a pain. It's going to hold us up, isn't it? We can't even fit the leaves or anything until no. we've... Uh... Our options were pretty limited at this point. Um, we made some phone calls, uh, but couldn't buy or borrow one from anywhere to have for that day. Right, that side seems to go in a lot easier than the, the one above. <clears throat> I don't know whether maybe when I had, because I had to fish the one out at the top, uh, which means cutting it out. So I don't know whether maybe I've scored the inside of the tube a little bit, which has made it a bit stiffer. But this side definitely seems to be going in easier. So that's uh, that's in. Might as well check that one just in case. It's... But no, that that one hundred percent needs reaming out. Is it quite a lot? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Considering, I mean, I imagine that material will ream quite easily. Yeah. But uh, annoyingly, they're, de they're definitely going to need. Uh, yeah, yeah, do it. No, All right, because that's kind of, kind of um, I'm going to change these tabs, but you don't need to film that because it'll be boring as shit. We'll be back when we've got a reamer. <laughs> yeah. The next day. Yeah, bake light bushes, are, uh, they're now fitted. Uh, we actually fitted them and we had to take them back out again um, to ream them down. 
uh, we don't have a, I think it's 35 mil, is that it's right? 35, yeah. yeah and and we couldn't get one anywhere locally. Yeah, we couldn't get a 35 mil reamer, so we actually put them on the lathe. We've got a little sort of hobby lathe, hobby lathe we use here, use here for certain things, um, which worked really well. Uh, still tight, kind of, I think they might have moved slightly whilst we knocked them in. So um, we went and bought that 35 mil abrasive wheel, which fits lovely, and you just give it a bit of a bit of a go with that just to just to smooth it out which stays quite spherical quite very happy with the fit um we didn't have to do the inners in the end i was uh i was a bit worried that we would but everything we, the arms have been in and tested and they feel great um the bush that i actually had to take out them so good and solid i'm not really worried about them being deteriorated inside i don't think yeah. i don't think they've got very little wear for a 70 something year old part there they're exceptional to be honest. Um, so yeah, whatever, I'm well, I'm well <coughs> happy with that. Um, beams on, I replaced these tabs here, which, uh, which now look great. Everything's been tapped through and is now sort of, you know, nice and free. So should we, um, should we try and fit these leaves? Yeah, they're really nice, the next... clean job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> So yeah, this is what we have. Um, I've inspected everything. So this is such a dirty <laughs> these are, they really are. Um, if you notice in the end, the, the ends are welded from factory. So you shouldn't actually be able to split oh, really? these That's apart. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, these should be welded from factory, um, yeah. especially on an old car, if they're not, weld them, because that's what keeps that in. So there's your knob. Yeah. Uh, knob, is that a knob? Or is no, that no. A, a, a nodule or a, what do you <laughs> a call dimple. it? A dimple, that's yeah. it. A notch. There's your dimple, there's your central dimple, and there's the one for the other side. So they're for each arm. So this is, I mean, if, if you really don't know what they do is you have a, this is, your suspension is in this. That, that is your rod. When this bends, that's what gives you suspension. It fits in like so. This is what holds it in place in the middle. Just screwed to there. And your arms, the same thing again. You've got a square on the end of there. There is a square gap in the middle there, which I found quite easily. If you look in the middle here, Dan, you should actually be able to see. So when I push this across, you should actually be able to see that hole. See it there? Oh, yeah. In the middle there? That's it. That's yeah. right in the middle. That's it, hot still. Yeah. Perfect. So that's your top top layer, that the, the, your top leaves in place. Um, what did I do with that? There you go. I've got this lovely magnetic thing to hold shit that and then I'll sort of go and check it on the floor. <laughs> so it's got an Allen key on top. Uh, which is five mil, is that right? No. Like ten. So we're nice and professional here, so we keep all our tools ready to do the job so <laughs> you guys don't have to watch me look at the sh all right that's a bit weird because that feels like i'm not sure if that's tight or not should, should try <coughs> it without the screw. yeah yeah just right undo that do it upside as well don't. i don't think it'll actually undo it under Oh, is it run out of threads? Looks like it. I mean, I did make that. Um, yeah, but it's about right. Like thickness wise, do you know what I mean? It's not going to be any thinner than that, is it? Yeah, let's see if I can take it off completely, do that up tight, and then screw that up on top. But Yeah, see how, how far you can get that in. Yeah. I mean, it will compress it a little bit. Well, you're not supposed to do it up super tight, no. are you? No, it's just enough to stop it from moving. Just wants to locate home. That's tight. 
I know it sounds crazy, but did it have a locker? Because there's no thread on there. Well, there's no thread on the end, but like from stock to that. When have, I when I when I took when I took that out, it didn't have one. Yeah. But then every other beam that I've ever used should have. have. One. So I yeah. thought maybe they were just missing. Mm, that's what I mean. Do do we? Maybe someone. Sure maybe someone we? in the the uh, the world of um, early car. Knowledge. Early car knowledge. Tell me whether that's needed or not. Yeah, now I've spent. Now I've spent so long <laughs> cutting it and making it. Yeah. Um, am I just being a dick? Do we not need one at all? I don't think you do because there's no there's no thread there. No, it does up super tight. I think you're right. Yeah. Like you that's say, bottomed on, out. On every other beam that that will have a lock nut. Okay. Maybe again, it's one of those early car quirks. Yeah. I did a video making them. It was really good. <laughs> we'll put it in anyway. <laughs> All right, let's do the bottom one, see if they're going as easy as the top. But I think, yeah, you might be right. I think that's just how it is. The, they've got that picture of a Cooper wagon beam. We'll see if there's one on there. Okay. So again, leave for the bottom set. Now, I have read somewhere that you're supposed to keep these top to bottom when you take them out and put them back in the same. Interesting. I don't know why, um, and I didn't know <coughs> because I'd taken it all apart before anyone ever said that. I imagine it's something to do with stress memory and that kind of thing. Could be. All right, that's so easy. That goes straight in like a... I've, I've seen people banging these through. Yeah. I don't quite know why, but... We didn't, we didn't actually need to. I'm saying that they definitely don't need those because that went all the way in and it's just stopped, yeah, stopped I, dead. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it might be one of those revisions later on where they go, well, let's just put a lock yeah. on there. Okay, uh, so, we'll have a look down here. You can see your two dimples there. That is, uh, that's ready for arms. Yeah. So, again, these two, I mean, I bought these. Oh yeah. Uh, I didn't. So did I didn't make, make these ones. I bought them. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure that I took them off. But they were fucked. Everything that came off these was was in the right state. Yeah. That's the other thing. All these have been uh, refurbished. Yeah. Everything has out. yet. There's nothing going back on that hasn't been yeah. sorted in some way or another. So that one goes up the top, because it's got a hole for the shock. Uh, so the shock on here mounts to the bottom. It's upside down. I know it sounds weird, but it's just the way they work. Yeah. So the total opposite to a newer beam. Yeah, yeah. Completely opposite, that's right. This is the fun bit, locating your leaves yeah do you know what i maybe shouldn't have put this um bump stop bump stop on but let's give that a bang with a hammer and see if it um yeah see if it bounces here and then. <coughs> yeah that is that is on if not undo the middle bolt so the leaves can move uh no because it's still it's still stuck in the it's not like an adjuster, it doesn't move. Oh, that's, it doesn't move? That was wedged shut. Oh, okay. It's, it's one, yeah, so this it's is- already solid. So this is almost preloaded up, so. Oh, cool. So I think maybe if you pull up on there and I give that a tap, yeah. that might do it. <laughs> and then we realized that we didn't put the seal in. <laughs> yeah. But you're all, so, all just there. So let's take this back out. You're gonna need some- uh, You're gonna need some welly. Kinetic persuasion. Okay. Okay, we'll just check him that for fit. <laughs> that was a dry fit. So, see, so these are kind of cool. I don't, you won't be able to pick it up on there, but so that's actually got cog logos on it. Wait, I can get it. So that's a wartime. Come out the light a bit. So I'd say this is um, this is stock left over from the war. Look at that. It's like f***ing new. Was oh, it NOS? Sorry. No, it, these are the original to the car. Oh, cool. So that's the that's the original. That's the original um, 
seal that came off this beam. They're just in all four of them in such good condition that I'm just reusing them. Mm. And you've got the, the window seals on my 70 Type 3 there. Well, like, do you know, that's what I was going to say. Do you reckon that you're going to get the, uh, in 75 years, get under the bonnet of the eyes and see if anything uh, <laughs> still supple? The same thing now if you actually look in there that is perfectly located or maybe maybe it wants one more knock to the to the right that is seals nice and tight i think that's ready to just put yeah that can go straight in where's that allen key okay two hours later two hours I think, and these do want to be nice and tight in there. Okay. Yeah, you see that's got plenty of meat left for a locker. Okay, that's one arm on. Uh, this will want a load of grease in it, this beam, but and it has got factory holes here and here if you look for grease nipples. Uh, the grease nipples I took off were original. Uh, they're, I mean, their threads are fine, but I think oh, they're blocked. Yeah. So I'm just going to order new ones when I can find them. Oh, lovely. Well yeah. nice, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. That's no play whatsoever. It's really, really nice that is. And this is this is the original baker like this side. It is, yeah. 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 I mean I'm sure someone's gonna say, Oh, why didn't you just do all of them if you're gonna do do two of them? Well, the two of them were shattered. But it's not even two, it's two out of what? Eight. Eight, yeah. It is two out of eight, so. but then I mean why didn't I do all of them? I didn't do all of them because there's nothing wrong with the ones that are in there. And I just can't be f bothered. Mm. Yeah, and and we and it's not like they haven't been inspected. They're all good condition. Yeah. Well, and you can see there's there's zero play in there. Look at that. That is. That's your suspension. Lovely. Do you know what, mate? These couldn't have gone much better. I'm really f happy with this. Mm. Yeah, no, they've gone in nice. Where's the bit for uh, slamming it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm well happy with that. Yeah, that was that one easier than I've ever had a being going together. Mm. Like I said, yeah. I think it's all in the prep. I think it's all the fact that we've tapped every thread, <laughs> yeah, all cleaned everything out. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon with it. And I'm really happy with how much we've saved on this beam. Um, we've had the shock towers the, at the bottom, they've been welded with new bolts. Um, these bolts are new, uh, just because they were so, they're, they're original. The whole beam's original, the arms are original. We have saved a phenomenal amount of them. Um, yeah, everything yeah, you can really. Yeah, which, I, which I'm really, really happy about. I just didn't, I never wanted this car to be a sort of triggers broom car, you know. Mm -hmm. It's had pan halves. It's had like you know normal stuff. Yeah. Normal stuff, but you know the frame head, Napoleon's hat section, uh, the entire spine pedal box. It's all original, and that's that's saying something for mm. so old. And it goes yeah, with that. That is your shock. I know it's ridiculous. For size reference, that's my hat. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame I don't have a yeah. have a normal beetle shot. Yeah. I did actually take a photograph of a of it next to a sort of yeah, I'll put that. A, in. A, but it was a slam shot, and it was still that much longer. So <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's do it. <coughs> right, well, that's awkward straight away. Uh, no. Now, originally that would have been held on with a castle nut. I'm not gonna lie, this is something that's not being done original. I didn't have one. We didn't have the right bolts to, that were gonna be strong enough to use with a castle nut. 
Um, so we've just used like a modern nylock on the bottom shot belt. I'm sure there'll be purists that'll cry about that, but I'm not gonna lose any sleep. No, a nylock is not gonna come off. That's it's literally his job. Yeah. Do you, do you know what? For a little shock, that has got some f***ing... It takes some to get yeah. it down. I mean, how much they do, I don't know. I mean, it's just that top arm, and I, I guess... Say, I bet they're barely going to move. Well, lose. that looks super compressed right now. Yeah. But when you put the weight of the car on that, it's going to open up. So I imagine that these almost work the by opposite. squeezing together yeah. rather than pulling apart. That's it. It took me a while to wrap my head around how they actually work. Because to me, they do the opposite of a normal shock. Sweet. Yeah. Shock's on. Yeah. Again, I'm surprised about the tension on that. Yeah. Yeah, it does move a bit. But, you know, that is your, that's the weight of the car. Yeah, digging it. Whereabouts it goes? <laughs> Still no right. Is there a locator? No. There's a... Is there a dimple there? It? Yeah. Looks about right. Yeah, so there is. In my experience, you really want to put this on loosely and then actually do your fine yeah. adjustment once when the you've actual... got it up. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, that's how you get clunky steering. And rubbing on the tube inside. All of that sort of thing, yeah. Where did we set that groove was? Right there. Yeah, it's right about the middle. I mean, yeah, seems about right. But is there a locator on there? Uh, no, not as such. I don't know. Uh, like you said, you know, the fine adjustments we can do at a later date. That's it. It goes kind of there until everything's in and we get it in a straight line. I think I've actually got new locking tabs for these, but these actually seem really good. Mm. Uh, I replaced that. Again, that's got nylocks locks instead of, um, uh, what's it for now? Uh, castle nuts. Uh, only reason was is, I mean, I don't even know that's the best. I got that from World War II VW, so I figured it's what all the guys are using. Um, I don't know if that actually means anything. Um, I've, I've reconditioned the steering box. It's actually, it's got some fine adjustments to do, but it turns lovely now. And there's, mm. there's if you look, if you look, the new oil. If you look, there's very, very little, no, well, no play at all. Mm. Pack full of new oil. Uh, some people say using grease, but I, I just use EP, um, which is as close as you can get to what it would have from the factory, I guess. I think it's about 25 degrees it's supposed to be, roughly. Yeah, like I say, I'll put it there and then it's, you don't, it's not its final place until everything else is bubbled. I think you can just stay like that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't paint it. Those tabs don't even look like they've been bent over. <laughs> uh, no, I flat put them on and flattened them yeah. all out. That's what I mean, it doesn't look like they've ever been bent over. No, I mean, I, I actually, I, um, I didn't pa I didn't paint it on purpose, just because I kind of like how good it came out once I cleaned it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I mean, it, it was it was good inside. It was full of rust. It had no fluid in it whatsoever. So the actual worm and whatever. But I don't know if you can remember Dan doing this, having to knock all this out and stuff. Yeah, I remember. It's quite hard work. Lots of heat, wasn't it? And... Yeah, it's not a rebuilding steering boxes. is not an easy yeah. job. I wish we'd filmed it when we'd done say, it. To yeah, be honest. that was before we started filming everything. And... Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there you go. Mint, sweet. Yeah. So, what's the next step? So, next step will be uh, spindles. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, I'm actually bringing them to Craig. We're going to yeah. do them together. So, 
We've got the spindles here. They're blasted with a, with so a touch of uh, I left all these bits in just so all the mating faces were um, protected. Didn't get by the blaster and the spindle, but the rest of it, yeah, just going to need stuff pressing in. And, yeah. So that's the next step. These are going to get reconditioned, um, painted up, and then we'll fit them. Sorry, we're talking in this video. You're all right. It's all right. Dan edits it, so you can take out what we'll say. And stuff like that. Ready? No. Try that. Hang on. Stay there. Watch your face. Yeah, mate, mate. That's gonna pin off. The problem that the guys very quickly ran into here is that one of the kingpins on one side is seized solid. What was, what was that, Craig? Okay. Trying to expand the actual outer on the spindle to break it free from the pin pin, because the brick pin pin's probably seized in there, busted in solid. Don't go too far, Craig, because that'll bottom out on that. Um... I'll go one more and then I'll check it. It's still got the steps all up there. Like the steps still up there, yeah. isn't it? Got it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's Is it going? That's good. That's every pump. Step, 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 so we say that this one is uh, actually an original link pin out from the 40s that came out of there. So the other one with these extra grooves looks like it was probably replaced at some point. That's uh, yeah, been in our 70 something years. Uh, no wonder it was so difficult to pull out. What do you want to do? Uh, so, we want to use the original ones, clean these up, and paint them rather than use the old uh, new ones that come in the kit just because they've got better pressings, cleaner, wider pressings, they sit better in the actual spindle. So with the new pins, we actually use Bill Stein. Uh, I think I got these from BBT, stock run. Um, but I think JK and Schofields, custom and commercial, stock them as well. There's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, they will, they'll do the job. But if you look at the, the original, they just fit that bit better. So we would say if you can save an original part, why why change it? Um, they also come with these, which are, which are plastic. So we've got some older fibre ones, which Craig says that he has better luck rubbing them down so they're not so tight. So we're going to use these. So what you're doing now, just taking the burrs off the edge? Yeah, I think they just rounded over a bit from pressing out and all the abuse they've had over the years. Uh, because we're struggling to get the actual brass bush through. See how it's tight at the minute. There we go. Ready? Yeah? Just give us a chart, gentle. <laughs> so that's it. So, you put that. See how that is slightly proud? Uh, that is actually from the sort of Benley manual. Uh, 
is so you're supposed to file that off so it's a smooth smooth mating face and then you have to file out the little groove as well square that out so that when your bushes were wearing your caps wherever we put them where do we put them caps there so these caps will sit into there so we have to file that groove out which we're going to do now i guess Focus on it. There we go. Okay. Do you think? So that's a, a proper parallel reamer for doing them. So it lines up the top with the bottom. So you've got this smaller reamer, which then drops down to the bigger one. So it keeps it parallel. Make sure it's nice and lubed up. See all the uh, swarf coming off of it. Taking the paint off our surface. So you've got a little locating pin. Locating pin goes in the spindle. Then you've got your fibre bush washer. And then your little plate. We've just dusted them with a bit of black, but we'll give paint them fully once they're together. And then your spindle slides on like that sometimes when you put the spindle on the fiber washers will be a little bit big so sometimes they'll slip together but you see how see that one's not too bad sometimes i'd like to i'll just take a, just a sliver off the fiber washer if they don't go together so you don't want it too tight but you don't want it loose so you don't want to have excessive play but you also don't want it binding up. So sometimes the fibre washers will come loose, sometimes. And then the next main thing as you see down there, you want to get that as close to lined up as possible because when you put your king pins in, what you don't want is your king pin binding up on the spindle. Yeah. And then yeah, you I can see, score yeah. the king pin. So you just need to then just have a little bit of a play around and line them up. <laughs> so uh, these are the king pins that I froze. They've been in the, in the deep freeze for um, for three days on ice packs. and we kept them on our ice and what's the reason for that Trey? so you shrink with the cold you're shrinking the kingpin and with the shrink kingpin shrunk they're just a bit easier to fit in so they just slot they should just pretty much see see how that's just gently going in so if you look how easy that's going in if that wasn't frozen that would you'd have to press it in and then if you're pressing it in you could end up doing some damage sliding in and when that warms up we lock it in and how do you know when to stop so i just basically get it so it's just even so see how that's pretty much that's a couple of mil over and that's yeah. about nine so i'd go one more mil on that or two and then take it once that's in that's the, it the link pin bushes sit in here yeah uh which will stop that from ever moving anywhere 
Yeah, so what will happen is your link pin. So you see how your grease, can you see the grease hole down there? I can. So your grease hole, so your king pin bush, your link pin bush will go there. And where is your link pin bushes? So see here, see how they've got a hole? Yeah. You make sure that hole's lined up with that grease nipple, like that. So when you press them in, it will push grease into, into the bush inside there. So it's got groove in, yeah. which then will feed your link pins. And then also it will bypass this, see how the hole's slightly off the center. And then yeah. it will push the grease down through into your kingpin. And then there's a groove on your kingpin that lines up. See that hole there? Yeah. That lines up with the top hole and that will push then the grease out and round there. Okay, that's interesting considering that the the kingpin that we took out of it only had a groove on one end, not not in the not in the bottom. Um, which is probably why it's f***ing hard to push out, to be honest. See, cause... if you look at that, I can just do that by hand, which is, I would say, just about right. So it's not too loose. So by the time it's on the vehicle, you think with your, with the throw of your steering, yeah. you shouldn't have any play. The other interesting thing about these kingpins is they're the same size as the originals that came off, which means that those pins stayed the same for years they you know there's not many things on that car that are sort of interchangeable with the later car but these kingpins they're the same width from 1945 which is kind of cool that's so once that's there so you've got it that far this socket actually fits against the main surface for the sh shims. So if you use that as a press against this side, I'll make sure that it's central. I guess you can feel that going instantly soft. Yeah, yeah, you feel it hit the, hit the face. Okay, so uh, fitting spindles. We'll put up a diagram um, of how this works. Now these and these O-rings, uh, they are for later, later cars. Uh, so we don't need these. And also a later car has, I believe, eight, spin eight shims per, uh, per link pin. Uh, and an early car has 10 per link pin. Again, it's on the uh, on the diagram. So yeah, we're gonna fit them. Uh, people make quite a big deal of this, and before when I've done them, they've, they've just been pretty easy, to be honest. Um, make sure I get these right, we're going the right way. <clears throat> so if you look at the angle of this, you imagine a right angle that spindle wants to be straight and if you look at the carriers they're actually at a at an angle so they have to sit you know like so so that's what the shims do it's so you can adjust just your spindle so it sits one you're, you're moving this against the arms i guess so the the way to do it is to take off the bottom arm. You see the gap in the top here. Take a vernier. Yep, 6.5. Five on vernier. That means A is five. B is five, C is six, D is four, that shims. Okay. Right, 
for using the key, they've now got exactly what, what they should have. Okay, so now we're gonna go put it in the top arm, pull that one back through a little bit, get the top one quite in there. You have to pull up on the bottom. Okay, so they're both touching. Now I've uh, I've kept the original bolts, just because there's there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I know a lot of people when they like doing a detailed build like to use all new hardware, but. I always think if, if it's an original, why not why not keep it? The way that they, they work, if you like, is where the link pin pulls through there and the bolt goes through. If you can see that that grooved area on an angle, as you turn it from this end, it actually pulls the kingpin tight. So what I'm going to do now is washer and then this, you see that bolts in there. Uh, let me just get something to So you see how that bolts in there stuck. When you actually turn the kingpin, it will just fall through eventually. Once that is through, you pull it, you see, you see that here, it will actually loosen and tighten against the bolt. So the idea is to get it so it's tight enough that it's still pivoting in there and turning, but it's not not got any play, which is probably about that. There is a, there's no play left or right. That turns lovely. Next time on Project 49, we disassemble and recondition all the internal brake components, build the brakes up from drum to drum. Thanks for watching our video. Please do like, share and subscribe. It really helps us out. Thanks very much. Bye bye.